Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's June 17th, 2023. I'm out in the uh, Western garden plot right now and we'll do a quick up, a quick update. Uh, we'll give you an update on how things are going over in the gardens. Uh, haven't spent much time in the gardens, been doing repairs and uh, some, uh, some work down and back uh, on the base camp some work around some much needed weed whacking lawn mowing those sorts of things and we've had some rain we got one and a half inches over about a 48 hour period then we got about a tenth of an inch over the last 24 hours yesterday we we're off doing book sale stuff uh, sourcing books and media for our books reselling uh, business and uh, so today we're going to do some more work in the garden in the central garden and we'll go over that in a second but uh, I thought I'd take a, a, a brief tour of our gardens and see where we're at. So not much new with the uh, honeyberries or his caps and you can see the bindweed no matter how much I try to, to get this under control. So one of the things is getting weed mats down, getting as much of the bindweed pulled out as we can. And over here with the blueberries, Thea has been getting a lot of the weed mats back up on the mounds for the blueberry plant, so that's really good. You can see the blueberries are really developing here, looking pretty good. Oh. And we have snakes sunning themselves on the mats as well. So we've got some weeding to do, some more weed mats to get down. Probably won't happen today. Thea may harvest some of our uh, chamomile for tea more of the blueberries. We're going to have a fair number of blueberries, thank goodness. And of course, last time I showed the honeyberries, the hiss gaps. Let's see if there's if any more are coming. So I got to get more weed mats down over in here. Let's see. These always produce from one below, down below. So right there by my finger, there's another one there. It hasn't started turning blue yet. But the birds will get them as soon as they start turning blue, but they're sweeter when they get full size blue. Try to get some of the weeds underneath there are popping somewhat. We need some nice hot days. I've got, I did go ahead and do some weeding over in here with the uh, weed whacker and uh, I haven't done anything over here with the thornless blackberry plants. But they are continuing to grow as you can see, looking pretty good. I should try and support them some, try and get the weeds, the quack grass out of here as well. Uh, and I'll use the stirrup hoe in the central sections here. So it's just been too darn wet. To get any significant weeding done. I did weed over in the uh, I did weed over in the eastern garden plot close to a week ago now and uh, got a lot I'm not sure what's going on with the camera got a lot of the weeds out there but uh, I haven't used the stirrup hoe or any other cultivators recently in the gardens. I do have a new tool that I will end up highlighting here. It's a brush mower. I'll just mention it now. It's from Prime Attachments, a direct drive brush mower. It works very well so far and I'll do a full review. Things that I think where they can improve and uh, and I'll probably try and shoot some video footage of using this bugger. It, it really is quite a uh, an amazing tool uh, with a hydraulic drive and all. With with this piece of equipment, it works extremely well. Now the other the other day, I talked about using the flail mower here, removing the drip tape, uh, and as you can see the uh, the weed mats are still down in the center down here. So we flail mowed all of the cover crop. I weed whacked and use a um, oh, one of my cultivator attachments to chop off some of the uh, the Bach 14 comfrey over there. That was all laying down on the weed mat as well. 
And so one of the goals is that we'll probably work in here some today and try and get some acorn squash over in one of these beds and the tomatoes. There may be some peppers and a few flower plants as well. But we'll pull the weed mats up towards the, the drip tape and we'll hook up the drip tape. And then I may put a, put a tarp down or put another cover crop on the rest of the beds. I don't know yet. Uh, the more life you can have on the soil, the better the health of the soil, which will take care of you in the future with your garden plants. So let's go over and have a look in the eastern garden plot and see how things are going over here. I really haven't walked through this garden plot in a few days, so I'm looking at it for the first time as well. And of course, a good gardener would be going through the gardens every single day. So we'll take a look at the scarlet red runner beans. So there still are a couple of voided spots. But I do see enough beans. We've got a couple of volunteer tomatoes in here as well. Couple small oak seedlings and several honey locust seedlings here as well. So not too bad. I actually love running the uh, having the scarlet red runner beans on the uh, hoop trellis like this. There's some voided spots. Hopefully I'm not zipping by this too fast for you to see. So here's a stretch right in here where I don't see any. We'll give it a few more days and see if the uh, seedlings start to emerge. Clover and chamomile are doing pretty darn well in the paths here. This is where I did come down and do a quite a bit of weeding. Uh, we did post a video harvesting the uh, the scapes from the our garlic and we've been enjoying them very very much so the mulch on this bed this is the bark uh, double ground hardwood uh, bark mulch and that has worked really really well suppressing the weeds are there some weeds in there yes but not too bad at all we did not get a chance to reseed this area, but I came through, I don't know if you remember in the last video, uh, there were tons of weeds and grasses in, in these paths and working their way up the sides. And instead of using the stirrup hoe, I used my hand and just hand weeded, which was real easy with the soil the way we've got it so far. So, so far, keeping an eye on the garlic, we just have the one or two leaves, maybe, I'm going to count that as one leaf that's turning brown. So we at least got a couple weeks before we're ready to, to harvest the garlic. Uh, let's go over and see. The raspberry plants, they're doing okay. They're not shooting up like crazy like I'd like them to. But one of the things I learned in life is patience. <laughs> so we'll be patient and give the raspberry plants a chance to get a good foothold here and uh, the Dutch red shallots looking pretty good chamomile right up against it here Let's see just how those roots are So that rain has really helped out quite a bit. Trying to get those whole tap roots out. I did shoot some video footage of me pulling the weeds by hand. And as you can see, I didn't get them all. So this one evidently went to seed here last season. Pull a nice steady, 
pull on these boogers and they tend to come out and these are thorny so they will hurt you if you aren't wearing gloves now the russet potatoes so over the last week we'd see they're popping here so maybe later on this week as these start to to get up a little bit higher i'll go ahead and start mulch, mulching them with the double ground hardwood bark mulch and that'll help to suppress all of these small weeds in here so within a few days i'm thinking i i need to to uh, mulch these up that'll that'll help to uh, deal with some of these weeds that are coming up but it won't hinder the potatoes as they're coming up so that's pretty good I really like the lower ground cover that we have uh, for our paths and all. That's really working out pretty good. Let's see how the sweet potatoes are doing over here. And as you can see, with the compost that came with lots and lots of uh, so these are our honey locust trees here, saplings or seedlings, all shooting up in here. And uh, they're fine. We'll transplant those as the season, at the end of the season when I'm harvesting the sweet potatoes. So pretty good. It looks like one of the, so here's a piece here. We'll give this some time and see, will these guys, uh, continue the rooting process and take off, but this looks very promising. All right, let's take a look at the strawberry bed. These guys are doing pretty well. And again, I'm not interested in harvesting any strawberries. Oh, dang it, didn't get the root on that one. But we're looking forward to the runners going out for these guys. And over here in this bed, this is where we took the, uh, the, the base suckers, like root suckers for the thornless blackberry plants. And so there's one that's doing okay. And if in the next couple weeks they don't show more progress, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these. These can be composted. So just a couple, looks like we just have a couple of the thornless blackberry plants that are doing okay from there. But the honeyberry plants, as you can see, they're actually doing quite well. So there's a couple that didn't make it here, one that didn't make it there, and probably there was one here that didn't make it. Sticks and twigs all over the place and probably a couple here that didn't make it. But otherwise, really happy with the hiscaps or uh, honeyberries. They did great. Small volunteer oak tree there. Over here, this is the white oak uh, IBC tote. Just a couple of these guys are gonna make it, unfortunately. These are some of the swamp white oaks in this, this uh, IBC tote. More swamp white oaks, just a few making it here. Same in this bin here. This one, there's some more life in it. And these are more of the swamp white oaks. Here's our chestnut trees over here. They're having a rough go of it. You can see some of the, the edges of the leaves are, are burnt a little bit and curled. Kale's doing fine. Thea keeps harvesting that. The English oaks here are doing fine. No changes in the English oaks. And the sage are blooming like crazy out here. And the, um, the thyme is just spreading. I'll show you another spot up front with the thyme. And the lavender is looking really good right over there. Some There's some more right over here. This is a smaller one right there. 
but this is just a buzz with the bees. And I think last time in the last garden tour, we walked up front to where the uh, the maple uh, front garden area is, our Japanese maples. And the irises, and there's some thyme up there. So walk up there. Sorry about the sound with the gimbal here. Raccoons had uh, opened up part of the <laughs> the ceiling on the uh, Harbor Freight and so they were inside each night so I had to work on that to fix that up but that's that Harbor Freight 10 by 12 greenhouse we've had that for I think 11 or 12 years now so it's held up pretty well here we are in the front garden area here and So iris is around in here. There's a couple of uh, chives planted there. Thyme, oregano, irises, oregano, some more oregano, some more thyme. Thyme, lots of thyme. Irises, hostas, Japanese maples. Uh, the fiddlehead ferns, a little cluster there, they'll all come back next year, that'll look great. And the hostas all along in here. Japanese maple. Another Japanese maple. There's four different cultivars. And the last Japanese maple. And this area here. So that's it for our garden tour today. Uh, pretty happy with how things are going. This season's so much different. We're so busy with the other things that we have to be doing. Uh, but the gardens really do give us a lot of joy, but there's a lot of work involved with gardening as well as most of you know. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll get out into the food forest and all, which I haven't done any work with. We see some of the peaches, I'm sorry, in our garden here you can see some of the peaches are developing not sure if you could see those the way the camera is here so Thea is always excited about our this this one I believe is a blushing star peach that we got from Stark Brothers really really delicious we have a couple more out back and all and that's about it hopefully Thea will do an update on the greenhouse how that's been coming she's been taking care of that we have had a few sales so that's been nice with the plant nursery uh, so I think that's about it. So our, our website is mindfullivingsanctuary.com, no underscores, no hyphens or anything. And uh, if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and by all means, folks, take good care of yourselves, take care of each other, and enjoy a beautiful weekend. Bye-bye now.